Traffic Center. And it's time for a special edition of Inside Oakwood with Dr. Leslie Pollard and special guest here with us today. We're excited to have them in the studio. We have with Dr. Pollard, we have Dr. Prudence Pollard, who is the administrator for Healthy Campus 2020 of Data and Web Management and the committee chair. We also have Dr. Lisa Del Rempel, who is the program director. And on the phone, we have Raymond King, Student Activities. Now, we're going to be talking about a lot of important information that you want to know about as students get prepared to return to campus. And so we want to say hello, Dr. Pollard, and good morning to you. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Donna. How are you? I, I hope you had a wonderful Mother's Day. I did have a great Mother's Day. I did. I got a lot of rest and did whatever I wanted to do. Oh, that's, that's For me, that's the good, that's a good thing. That's the important but, thing. Yeah, but of course, I spent time with my mom. I was going to ask, well. how's your yeah, mother? Yeah, she's doing well. She's, she's doing really well and uh, so we just kind of had a little time together yesterday good yeah, good good yeah. well tell Mrs. Swinton we wish her a belated happy Mother's Day we sure will we sure will I'll let her know she's probably listening right now so you heard that right mom <laughs> <laughs> and all the moms in, in, in the studio this morning yes, too we, yes. we wish them too we hope that they had a wonderful peaceful restful yes. and restorative Mother's Day yeah Yes, we I do. like that. Yes, we need that. So give us some restorative word from All right. word from the day. The word of the day. Okay, very quickly then. We always do this, and I'm glad we do because we get quite a few listeners who say it's been very helpful okay, to them. Okay, great. Uh, so Jesus Christ was the most revolutionary leader that we've ever seen in human history. Mm. And so a part of what he did was he launched principles and teachings that were really counter-cultural counter -cultural commentaries. Okay. So- one of his most revolutionary sayings is the whole Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, right? right? Okay. Matthew 5. Now, within that, he has a number of things that he says that are just, if you're, somebody tries to make you go one mile, go two, he mm -hmm. talks about turning the other cheek. So I want to isolate just one little piece of his revolutionary counsel in that sermon, and I commend all our readers to read it, Matthew chapter 5. And this is one of the strangest sayings ever to fall from the lips of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He says, love your enemies. Mm. <laughs> and then he said, okay, okay, we all kind of like slump when he says that. He says, oh, my goodness. He says, love your enemies, not hate them. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Mm. Pray for those who persecute you. Yeah. Now, you know that's revolutionary, right? You say, right, oh, my goodness. How right. many times haven't I failed that counsel? Yes. I, I read something interesting, though, it, and, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing what I read about the power of prayer when it comes to your enemies, mm -hmm. the power of prayer. So here's, here's, what he, here's, here's what the writer pointed out. The writer said, the eagle doesn't fight with the snake on the ground. Wow. She takes mm. the snake to the sky. She True. changes the battlefield. The snake has no resistance, power, or balance in the air. Mm. On its, but on the ground, the serpent is powerful and deadly. But in the air, it is useless, weak, and vulnerable. Wow. Now here comes the punchline. Take your fight to heaven in prayer Ooh, and watch God disable <laughs> your enemies, right? Don't yes. fight the enemy in your comfort zone, but change the geography of the battle. Take the enemy high and you will be sure of victory. God is with you. Whatever your battle, look to the sky and deliver everything to God. The Lord Almighty fights for us. Take your enemies into the high space wow. of prayer. I love that. I just Isn't that powerful? Yes. Take them into the place of prayer. So yes. the, the prayer is the air mm. that we mm -mm. take them up into, and then we watch God do the work. Yes. He disables them. I think the key that we have to remember in enemy management, because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, right. enemy, enemy management, ma uh -huh. Uh -huh. is that God not only wants you to win the victory, he's also trying to save your enemy. Right, right. He really is, because yes, he loves he your enemy too. Mm. He does. Mm. He loves mm. your enemy. Mm. Mm. So love your enemy enemies and pray for those who persecute you you're having problems on the job this morning mm -hmm. you're having problems in the family you're having problems with persons treating you unfairly mm -hmm. unjustly mm -hmm. don't don't sit around and curse them right pray, pray for, for them, them. and yeah. watch god watch god bring Ooh, you through to victory isn't that powerful <laughs> yes that that's what that's what jesus said powerful. love your enemies and pray for them. matthew Ooh, chapter 5 wait. verse 44 mm -mm -mm. so when we think about prayer we think about all those things i guess we should segue to healthy campus well, um, i'm thinking part that's, of spirit a, that's another to enemy out. that's another enemy I yeah mean, bad corona, health is an enemy right coronavirus an enemy. is an enemy and we have a re we have a plan to deal with and we have enemy. a plan to deal with right? that enemy right so in the context of the coronavirus donna mm -hmm. we've got some guests this morning who are just going to Pre present to us something 
that we've been working on for four or five years. So what I love about this is that Oakwood is not late to the game in terms of creating healthy exactly. spaces on mm-hmm. campus. Mm-hmm. But we started a while ago, and we hear a little bit about that journey. But this morning, we've got Dr. Prudence Pollard, our Vice President for Research and Faculty Development. Uh, Dr. Prudence Pollard, I've known her for 45 years. <laughs> <laughs> Intimately. <laughs> Intimately. Know her very, very well. Know her dedication to health and, and these concerns. Uh, I know her academic history. Her, her PhD is in evaluation, measurement, and research design. She's a professor of public health at mm-hmm. Loma Linda for many years mm-hmm. and also a registered dietitian. So that's a that's a, wow. an asset to Power this whole woman. conversation about health. Yes. Then we've got Dr. Lisa Dalrymple, who is our director, and she's also an assistant professor of nutrition and dietetics, and her PhD is in food chemistry. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so she's a food scientist, mm-hmm. so they can tell you a lot about food and the yes. power and potency and all those kinds of things. And then, of course, another Oakwood graduate is our director of student activities, uh, Mr. Raymond King, and we're expecting him to call in. He directs our Healthy Campus Ambassadors program, Health Ambassadors, student, 40 of them. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, once Dr. King, uh, once uh, uh, Mr. King calls in, then we'll certainly log him into our conversation mm-hmm. too. But Healthy Campus 2020 yes. is what is preparing our campus even further mm-hmm. to receive the students who will return, God willing, we have to say that, God willing, mm-hmm. August 1st. Right, right, August 1st. So a lot of parents are nervous about that. I'm sure even the students are nervous about that. But I like what you said, and, and it comes through every time. You talk about how Oakwood has already got things implemented not knowing that the pandemic no was coming, we could never have done it no we have this we do we do we look like to, to people who don't yes. know donna we look like geniuses now <laughs> but we're not we're really not and i need to say that all glory and honor goes to god who gave these visions back in 20 back in 2011 right. about a healthy campus i mean mm-hmm. i did a speech january 25 2011, in which we talked about online delivery, we talked about a healthy campus, and and a number of these initiatives that are maturing right now as we speak, Mm -hmm. those initiatives are maturing, and they're maturing just at the right time. It's almost as if God saw the future and said, this is what I want you to begin working on. And one of those was healthy campus. Right. So tell us how that got started, Dr. Pollard. Oh, well, I the think other the other Dr. Pollard. <laughs> Our president could continue because I got the mandate in 2013. Wow. Um, when our president returned from a meeting with other HBCUs, mm-hmm. and I believe it was a stop smoking initiative for mm-hmm. university campuses. Okay. And I believe the speaker mm-hmm. at that event, one of the speakers was former Surgeon General Regina Benjamin. Oh, yeah. Yes, Dr. Benjamin, a native of Birmingham, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, And when uh, our president raised his hand to say something, she said, if I may paraphrase, the president may correct me on this. uh, Dr. Benjamin said, Mr. President, you are the president of Oakwood University. We know all about Oakwood uh-oh, University. Uh-oh. You have been smoke-free right. since 1896. Right, right. Our president came back to campus after that meeting and said to me, as the person in charge of research in mm-hmm. our campus, mm-hmm. it, do we have a healthy campus? Mm. I said, Mr. President, I cannot know until we assess. Mm-hmm. And then I will present a report okay. to you. That was 2013. Right. Healthy Campus began in 2015. Okay. Two years of assessment of the mm. campus, two years of planning, mm-hmm. a team of over 35 individuals mm-hmm. and partners from uh, external to the campus as well. Wow. So, so th- that was the beginning. Did you find that the campus was healthy or what? what it well, <laughs> <laughs> here's that's what a we, good question. Here's <laughs> what we found. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We could not answer the question. Oh, wow. Okay. Because we had no evidence. No, ba- no basis. Okay. Okay. So one may say, well, you're a vegetarian campus. Right. We got that the health means message. you're healthy. Right. Yeah. You have the, you know, so called, we have the, the yeah, health, health message. message. Right. Okay. But what evidence, mm-hmm. what case could we make to the president mm-hmm. that, yes, it is healthy because you can be an unhealthy vegetarian. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. And uh, so we organized ourselves around the message we've all embraced, what mm-hmm. you said in mm-hmm. terms of the health message. Yes. So eight principles are laid out for us. Okay. 
okay, mm -hmm. that helps us whether we're Seventh-day Adventists or non-Seventh-day Adventists. The EPA embraces these. Uh, the, the Surgeon General, if mm -hmm. you read the Surgeon General's report, the Surgeon General of the United States, mm -hmm. all of these principles are embedded. Okay. Okay? So those eight principles, sunlight, Yes. Outdoors, fresh air, physical exercise, mm -hmm. nutrition, rest, um, water, water, yes. um, both external and internal, trust, mental health is embodied in mm -hmm. that because trust means trusting in God right. as well as the horizontal, our relationships to, with each right, other. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we took those principles, we gave them to our student body, and we said, how would you? take these principles and name them in such a way that it will appeal to students. Mm -hmm. And they entered into a competition okay. led by Mr. Raymond King. Yes, yes. And our students came up nice. with the acronym STAND OUT. STAND OUT. All right. Now. One word for each of the eight principles. Wow. And then our students and faculty got together mm -hmm. and wrote a book. Mm. The book is called Eight Secrets, okay. and it's available to our readers as well, our listeners yes. as well, mm -hmm. so they can acquire the book. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Dr. Dalrymple later on will tell us how our listeners can uh, get a copy of the book. So is every student on campus touched by Healthy Campus 2020? And how? Let's ask Dr. Dalrymple that okay, question Dr. because Dalrymple. she does the operation on a day-by-day -day basis. All right, Dr. Dalrymple, she's with us. How do, how do, I'm not hearing you. Hold on, I got you. There you go. So how, how does uh, Healthy Campus 2020 touch all of our students or does it? Well, Healthy Campus 2020, first of all, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Healthy Campus definitely touches and impacts all of our students. Um, let me say the first initial point at which our students come in contact with uh, what camp Healthy Campus is, is during orientation. And that's at the beginning of the fall semester. And during that time, we have a wellness day where uh, primarily focuses on, as Dr. Pollard uh, stated, the standout principles. And at that time, we have all of our students, incoming freshman students that are a part of this wellness day and learns about healthy campus and standout. But throughout the semesters, both fall and spring, we have various programs that are aligned and um, they are Stand out, the standout principles are used, or Healthy Campus is used to plan and program various events that we have on campus. So ranging from um, Nutritional Awareness Month to Breast Cancer Awareness Month, there's so many things that mm -hmm. focus around our standout principles. And we have uh, our students that engage, mm -hmm. and, and this is a student-led um, initiative. Okay. And so as uh, Mr. Ray King works with our health ambassadors, he helps, trains them uh, around the standout principles, and they are very much involved with assisting in the various programs. So we are very fortunate to have this health initiative. We are happy for it, and we're so happy that a lot of our students get to participate and be very much in front and involved with it. Wow. So the question that everybody wants to know. <laughs> okay, is how are we preparing our students, or what are we doing to prepare to receive our students that are coming in August as part of Healthy Campus? Either anybody. So, if I may say, um, what Dr. Dalrymple described was a health fair that our students participate in when they first arrive on campus. That is a key part okay. of Healthy Campus, mm -hmm. and what that means is if you ever see our logo, it's yes. on my shirt here, you yes. see an A plus beside it. Our students, this is unique, no other university does this. Wow. Our students receive a health transcript. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Every year they are enrolled at Oakwood, that data will be added to their transcripts. Four columns that measure them on the comorbidities affecting African Americans. Oh wow. Obesity, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular mm -hmm. disease. Yes. Okay? Our students go through that assessment. That's wow. their initial introduction to healthy, healthy campus. campus. Yes. And there are also work workshops conducted 
throughout that health fair. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's their first immersion. Okay. If Mr. King was on the line, he would tell you that our ratio for student health ambassadors is one health ambassador for every for every 25 students. Oh, wow. That's good. Okay. So the goal is to saturate mm -hmm. the campus mm -hmm. with peers who understand the principles and can be in a just-in-time moment with their roommates or those on their dorms, mm -hmm. tell them about the eight principles and right. help them to live healthy, wow. he healthier lives. So, and, and so one of the ways then that we help our students as they come to campus mm -hmm. is through these full biometric right. workups that mm -hmm. Dr. Lisa and Dr. Prudence run. Mm -hmm. And they get a full biometric workup with the health transcript has been mentioned. Okay. Now those comorbidities that were just mentioned, mm -hmm. if you notice, each one of those is a very dangerous underlying condition mm -hmm. that makes one highly susceptible mm -hmm. to death right. mm -hmm. when, with, when infected with, with the, the coronavirus. coronavirus. Right. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is power right. to know whether or not one has one of these morbidities mm -hmm. and how to manage them becomes a part of what our students are going to do when they come back to campus. Okay. okay. That's really important. Wow. <clears throat> is re okay. To know is really important. Right, the, right. I think the second piece of what happens when the students come back, when they come back in August, is, is, is the question of how we manage the social distancing. And right now we've got a whole committee that's yeah. working on just that piece. How do we operate a campus mm -hmm. that was never designed for people to be distant from each other? Right. Mm -hmm. How do we operate an academic program, an academic operation that allows for that? So we've got some recommendations that are going to be coming forward from our okay. responsiveness task force okay. on exactly how to do that. But parents who are listening this morning should be aware mm -hmm. that Oakwood is not new to this game, mm -hmm. that we started years ago, 2015. That puts us five years mm -hmm. into this. No other campus is doing this kind of thing. And, and to signify that, our campus has been nationally awarded yes, and recognized okay, yeah. as the premier campus wellness program because of its comprehensiveness. Wow. So when mm -hmm. students come to campus, they actually get a full biometric workup mm -hmm. in partnership with our health services and with Huntsville Hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're given a transcript that says, okay, this is what you have to manage. Wow. I'm, I'm curious, uh, Dr. Prudence, some of the data that has come forward on the entering classes. Do you have any of it, Justin? Oh, yes, Tip of yes. Your uh, so we have been tracking for the five years, as uh, we have indicated, because our goal is to, Im to improve the health status of African Americans mm -hmm. who are in the workplace. Okay. So you have to mm. start. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. early. Um, and so we figure we have students here for four years. Mm -hmm. If we get the habits mm -hmm. ingrained mm -hmm. within the four years and when they enter the workplace, they will have better health and their productivity will right. increase. Right. And so for our students, when they come to us, mm -hmm. they're going through the education program, they're going through the health fair, mm -hmm. they're going through the peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, mm -hmm. uh, and they are prepared mm -hmm to help others and also to take care of themselves. Right. With regards to the data, okay. in the general um, region for the southern states, mm -hmm. we know that these comorbidities affect more than 30% of African Americans. Right, right, right. Disproportionately, mm -hmm. we have the highest rate of diabetes, obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and cancers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? And not only those in terms of morbidity, right. also mortality. Mm -hmm. We die from them, mm -hmm. okay? What we've noticed across the five years, Donna, is that our student body is mimicking Mm, the, right. the profile mm -hmm. of the communities from which they come. Right. That's understandable. Mm -hmm. So we have been looking at those rates and we're seeing about a 20% mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. our campus. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. okay? That's a problem. That's an issue. But we are not the only ones sharing that concern. Right, mm -hmm. right. We're one of our partners. We have a number of partners. The American Heart Association mm -hmm. is one of our partners. The American Cancer Society mm -hmm. and the Partnership for a Healthier America, mm -hmm. of course, which um, from which we received the Crystal Apple Award in 2018. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're also aware. So that's why they also have targeted initiatives to HBCUs. Okay, okay. Because if your immune system is affected, 
by these comorbidities, okay. then when you are, when you mm-hmm. catch this virus, the COVID-19, mm-hmm. your immune system is not prepared mm-hmm. right. to, to handle mm-hmm. it. And so it's not unusual for us when we see African Americans dying at a disproportionate rate Mm -hmm. from Mm COVID-19. So on our campus, our goal is for not only a healthy environment, and that's important as well, the air quality in our buildings. We monitor our air quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. In our buildings. Okay. okay. Most people don't pay attention to Most colleges quality. don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> So we monitor these things. Okay. Even our vending machines. Yeah. Mm, okay. Our vending machines have healthy mm-hmm. and healthier. healthier. Yeah. Mm. The left side is healthy. The right side is healthier. Wow. Our dining rooms, we have the point of sale information mm-hmm. on the nutrients within mm-hmm. the food so our students can make intelligent choices mm-hmm. for health improving their own health status so let me let me ask this question um dr dalrymple or dr any or dr um, pollard also can answer but if i'm a student and i'm coming in this year i don't know i have diabetes um and i may have some other things going on and i go through the health fair and i find this out are there different protocols that i'm going to be given than any other student that may not have these same morbidities that we've been talking about we've already anticipated that for five years we've been doing that right. so i let dr so, dalrymple speak a little bit to our protocol yes once a student gets their health transcript after the health paint that picture of what 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 is going to look like for them what do they have to do and how you know specifically make sure. it plain for us sure thank you so much so um Once the students receive their health transcript, we have uh, things set up in place where they will begin to have uh, one-on-one access with um, a nutritionist, a registered dietitian, actually. And uh, that is one of the plans that we have set in place where this student will now be able to have um, one-on-one access and also um, the student will be able to um, set up various appointments. So this registered dietitian will be able to lay out direct plans that will be able to help the student, help the student in their diet and formulate exercise regimens. And so this health fair, as Dr. Pollard stated, is able to track for over a four year matriculation of the student, how the student is best Mm -hmm. Um, changing their lifestyle in order to Mm -hmm. be healthy and healthier. And one thing that I wanted to add was um, everything that Dr. Pollard stated, we see that these comorbidities and these health disparities are being seen in a much younger population. Mm -hmm. So I love the term that she used as far as saturation. And not only the programs that we plan on campus, but healthy campus and standout is embedded into the curriculum as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we touch our students at every point, teaching them how to adopt healthier lifestyle, because this is the time Mm -hmm. at which learned behaviors Mm -hmm. are, are formed. And so if we can impact them in such a way to adopt healthier um, practices, this will definitely propel them into uh, post Oakwood, how to um, go about living Mm -hmm. and also sharing healthier principles with others around them. And even in the community, right here in Huntsville, Huntsville, because we're impacting Huntsville as well. If I would uh, like to add to that, Donna, it also, the health transcript also triggers action from our health and counseling Mm, center. So our nurses, we have a fully staffed health and counseling center with both health interventionists and mental health Mm -hmm. experts. And I believe you have heard from Ms. Arnold Mm -hmm. um, previously. Mm -hmm. And so with the health transcript, if a student is in the red zone, Mm -hmm. okay, that triggers a visit from the health, the director of health services, okay? okay? Or she may even escalate it to our physician Mm. because sometimes we have students who are wondering, I'm falling asleep in class, I don't know what's going on, I just can't stay awake to study. That student may be suffering from type two diabetes Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. doesn't know it. So when the health transcript 
yes, is it, delivered, mm-hmm. those students in the red zone, whether yes. it's mental health or physical health, mm-hmm. they are directly contacted by our director for health and counseling center wow. and triage. Wow. So if I were a parent sending my kid, that all of this information that I receive is going to make, make me feel comforted. I'm not. It's going to relieve my worrying about the coronavirus and my child being down here at Oakwood University because it seems like you have a lot in place. We've got some things coming out that's going to help us provide the education with distance learning, not distance learning, but distance uh, social distancing. Right, 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 right. So we've got all of those things coming down the pipe, and so we're really ready. Yeah, we are. We are. We're we're ready and we're getting ready. Okay. Because it takes both of those, right? Right. So you're ready at one point in time as the goalposts change and move because, again, everything is changing weekly, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so then you have to adjust again. Right. But right now we are in a position of preparing and being prepared. Right. Because it's both of those things. Right. And and until we get to the end of this – we are going to have to stay in a position where we are nimble and flexible and adaptable. Mm. But the message I want to get out to our parents this morning is that <clears throat> there is a focused effort on making sure that this campus is both healthy and safe. And whatever yeah. we have to do to ensure the well-being of our young people who are coming back to this campus, Oakwood is all in and has been all in for the last five years. Right, right. right. I it's mean, not new. It's not right. new. <laughs> not new. Maybe this new for others, not new for us. Well, I'm glad that you all were able to share that information. Anything that we need to touch on before we go? We've got like a minute left. Didn't well, it? yes, of course, of course. We're getting we're excited as we think about our community-facing work, which is to open our community health action clinic and to break ground. Right. And there we can continue to deliver community transformation mm. as we have a healthy campus, our goal is also to impact the health of communities. Yes, and we're going yeah. to do that in a number of ways. We've already talked about some of those, mm-hmm. but that's going to be really exciting for students, for faculty and staff. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. We're we planning the groundbreaking in June. God, oh, God wow. willing. Yeah, Praise yeah. God. For we're that. planning the groundbreaking. We got everything in place right now. Just a few. A few more things that need to be pulled in, and the quarterback for that, of course, is Healthy Campus and okay. Dr. Pruden. So maybe you could give us a minute yes. on where we oh, are yes, with that. Yes, definitely. Sure. Two yes. major initiatives. Number one is the Community Health Action Center yes. and Clinic. Mm-hmm. That's where our students, including our student health ambassadors, mm-hmm. will deliver service to the community, mm-hmm. and our, our faculty are excited about that. Yeah. Um, imagine a 2,000 square foot building Ooh. where individual programming will be delivered to mm-hmm. our partners. We already have a community advisory. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also have, this is exciting, mm-hmm. and I know Dr. Lisa is jumping up and down <laughs> over this. We have a mobile. Oh, wow. A mobile. Oh, what? Very exciting. Yes, yeah. yes. A, a mobile, mobile unit. Okay. Uh, unit. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Imagine a farmer's grocery, a okay. farmer's market yeah. on wheels. Oh, yeah. wow. In fact, our market is being wrapped right now. It's at Ooh. the construction site. Oh, yeah. nice. When you see it, you just see fruits and vegetables all over it. Oh, my goodness. On the inside, it's like walking into a, a grocery style. store. Yeah, really? Definitely. Why is that? that? Is so nice. uh, because there are six food deserts. Yeah. Dr. Lisa can define a food desert for us, mm-hmm. but we have six food deserts. Mm. People can't get fresh fruits and vegetables. Wow. And so Healthy Campus, here's our tagline. Mm-hmm. Healthy campus, healthy healthy community. community. Mm. We Mm -hmm. cannot keep this message to ourselves. So I'll let Dr. Lisa tell us what is a food desert. Sure. So a food desert is an area in which you have limited to no access to healthier, affordable, to healthy, affordable food options. And so as Dr. Pollard stated, we have identified six food deserts right here in our local community. Mm. And so we have the message. We have the students. We have the education. And so we want to be a light in our community. And so in doing so, we were fortunate enough to uh, receive funding from the state of Alabama and in partnership with our OU Farms right here on campus to bring healthier option to these communities that we have identified as food deserts. So to be a light in our community, have our students at the front of this to uh, be in the front and be able to deliver 
health message, health education. Um, this is something that we're going to be able to assist the community with learning how to utilize these foods in the best way possible in order to get the best out of the foods, all of the nutrients and vitamins that they need during this time to be healthy. And so we're very excited for it. As Dr. Pollard stated, the, the vehicle is um, being constructed almost completed. And so even though our time, because of what is happening now in the world, at the time frame at which this was supposed to launch has been pushed back a little bit, we cannot wait wow. until that happens so we can be in the community and, and helping others. Wow, exciting stuff, Dr. Paula. This is absolutely, really, really, really absolutely. So, so our message of care is that there's a continuity of care. We continue the academic program we're continuing the care for students. That is so important. Mm -hmm. And as, as families begin to think about how they're doing education, how students are going to be educated in this whole new environment, Oakwood University is a great choice for lots of reasons, not only academic, but holistic reasons, because one of our keys in the marketplace is that we educate the whole student. Right. So I'm very grateful for that. I really, really am. Amen. And as more advanced techniques and technologies become available, Oakwood will appropriate them. Yeah. Right now, we don't have academic institutions that are actually doing testing. Mm -hmm. I would love for Oakwood to be oh, groundbreaking be in that sense, right? Yes. But, but, but testing in general is a challenge, right? Right, right, right. <clears throat> so you certainly don't have institutions doing it mm -hmm. because of the availability of testing. Mm -hmm. But as that becomes available, mm -hmm. Oakwood is going to be in the groundbreakers with it. Right. So, Amen. so yes, we're excited. Thank you so much, all of you, for being with us today for the special edition of Inside Oakwood with Dr. Leslie Pollard. Thank you, Dr. Paul Prudence oh. Pollard, for being here. And Dr. Thank you, Del colleagues. Rumble. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. That's it. All right. We're done. And we'll see you again next time for another special edition of Inside Oakwood on Thursday, same time, 830 Central Time, right here in the Tennessee Valley. Thanks for being with us. WJOU Huntsville, 90.1 FM, a broadcast service of Oakwood University.